It's a black hole. That's not very comfortable. As you've heard in other episodes, we have a tradition of Friday breakfast or lunch at Off Camber with the team. Thank you. Welcome to Off Camber well, Friday. Says, this says my homemade on breakfast it. burritos. Excuse Did me, it? you're oh, handing out, you're handing out someone Here. else's stuff, sir. Here. Ooh, thank you. Uh, this is this is for you. Look, Maya. Uh, it's got your name on it. <laughs> this one's for you. It's team building. You know, I'm still made homemade breakfast burritos this morning. Yum. So Klein came to us with this Infinity. I think it was a Q70, I believe. He wanted an exhaust put on. So after my tech got it up in the air, I walked underneath the car. The oil can's starting to rust. We should get a picture of that for him. Now, look at the exhaust. Holy shit. Look at these bolts. Language. Oh, sorry. I shit you not. I got a big mouth. Okay, you can hear me in the shop. I'm trying to fit the fucking 5 8 Look at these bolts. They're no longer nuts. Look at this. So this is not going to be pleasant to take off. Holy. Wow, look at this side. It's falling apart on me. Yeah, there's a lot of rust underneath this car. On the exhaust. Holy shit. The level of rust that was stunning. There are nuts and bolts and such that hold the exhaust together. And from the video you saw, those nuts and bolts, instead of being two separate components, have through heat cycles and quite frankly oxidation, have turned into one piece of rust. At that point, you cannot take the nuts off the bolts because they've turned into one piece of oxidized metal. Look how crispy that is, look. Oh my God. All right, yeah, I wanna get a picture of this in the car. That's terrible. God, look at these nuts. So something that we do here at Off Camber that I don't think a lot of shops do is I like the client to be involved when the car's in our house, right? The way we do this is by pictures. So as the car is in surgery, I like to walk and take pictures of the car in different states of disassembly and reassembly. So you feel like you're part of it. And our clients absolutely love that piece. And I think it makes them understand the level of work that we go through to make sure things are just right when we put a car together or do work on anyone's car. And quite frankly, the gearhead just like to see the innards that they don't really get to see very often. Like for me, before I had my shop, and the rare times I drop my car off at a shop, sometimes I want to hear about my car for weeks. And it's like, it's a black hole. That's not very comfortable, especially when you're a car person. That's your baby you're giving to somebody. So I like people to know what's happening. All right, I'm gonna send a picture so he sees it's gonna be not just unbolt it and bolt a new one. Right. You're gonna right. be cutting shit. Yeah, not like it. Two nuts and put it back in. No, this no. is a process. You gotta work very hard, cut it down. No, no, agree. And this is what we need extra punch, time punches for. Right. Is the extra work it's gonna take to take this down. Right. So I'm gonna send the client pictures right now. Okay. So he sees. Okay. I want him to know. And then when he sees your time punches, you right. connect my picture right. with your time punch. Say, that's why it's more. Yeah. That's that I'm getting rough. See this? Look at this. This is starting to. The oil in the yeah, that's not good. Japanese cars do that though. Yeah. I don't know why. So what we have to do is use a tool the technicians call a fire wrench, aka blow torch, and we just use the torch to cut off what's left, the metal cut the exhaust up, and then we can put the new exhaust on. Again, another success story. You know, got the exhaust on, the car sounded awesome. The client was super happy. I think he'll be back for more stuff. This client brings in a Maserati and it needs new control arm bushings in the front. Juan and I were talking about how do we help this customer. So Juan calls up the dealer. Good afternoon, this is Juan with Off Camber. 
They don't sell a lower control arm by itself. <laughs> Maserati, you know how it is. I know, but it's just funny to me. So they sell upper and lower control arm already assembled, right? With the bushings and everything in. So yeah. you have to pull these, yeah. pop those in. Okay. That is a almost $6,000 estimate from Maserati. Parts and labor. Okay. The problem is today, if you compare the price of labor to a part, it's sometimes better to change an entire part that has a piece failing than it is like the old days to pay someone to replace just the one bushing or the piece that's failing. The other option is for us to pull the parts, press out the bushings, press in new bushings, and that's gonna be like four grand. Oh my God, that's obscene. To replace the bushings, the control arm is gonna be $4,000? Yes. Just do the bushings. Really? Parts and labor. How much are just the bushings? The bushings alone are almost a thousand dollars. They're charging us three thousand dollars to press the bushings in it now. Okay, obviously it's been cheaper for us to do it. Yeah. Because we're not going to charge Bill three thousand dollars to do bushings. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Do do we do the bushings or do we do Maserati? The and people ask me. Just the other day, somebody asked me, Mo, what do you think about Maseratis? I looked at them and I said. They sound super sexy, they have a nice shape to them, but this is the problem I have with Maseratis, is the cost of the parts might as well be a Ferrari, right? I mean, it's the same Ferrari price levels. Yeah. Availability, just like a Ferrari, right? Parts, remember we waited like, what, four months for that six, last headlight? Six months for a headlight. Was it six months, and how much was the headlight? I think it was close to grand. No, it was more than that. More than that? It was like $4,000 for the headlight. That's what I'm saying. I don't get the love for the Maserati. You Maserati lovers, forgive me. I don't dislike Maseratis. I just dislike their pricing model. I understand. You like what you like, and that's great. I'm just giving you an honest opinion. So if Maserati has the bushings, it's 4K. If they do <clears> just the bushings, yes. Right, it's 4K. If we do the bushings, it's a thousand bucks the bushings. A thousand dollars a bushing plus whatever the labor is. I don't know but, how many hours it's going to take. But even if the labor's two days, if it's two full days to the bushings, I don't think it's going to be 16 yeah. hours. We're still, it would still be a thousand dollars on the Maserati. I think we're going to be much more than a thousand bucks on the Maserati. Yeah. The bushings for Maserati were a thousand bucks, and we were trying to figure out, you know, an appropriate number of hours that it would take us to replace the bushings. And tell them. Maserati saying that if they do the bushing, it's four thousand ish. Yeah. Right. New control arms are how much? Six. Six thousand. That's all in. Done. All in, right. All in. Yeah. Done. Okay. That means that compared to Maserati, we still have three thousand dollars to play with. Because it's a Maserati, we may have to deal with funky stuff, and it could take him a majority of the day just to get it off the car, and then press the bushing out. Now, we don't know if they're a special size or if they have a special retainer or anything like that. Agreed. I mean, there's always that risk, right? But that's why we're good at what we do, because we can figure stuff out. I saw the control arm myself. There are two horizontal bolts that hold it to the carrier on the inside. And I didn't look at the outside, but the outside is probably just a ball joint that bolts through to the knuckle. So the ball joint is part of the lower control arm. Yeah, that's fine. But, that, but that's what I'm saying though, there's probably just a, a single nut that holds that ball joint to the steering knuckle on the outside. Yeah. I don't think it's anything unique. Again, you never know, it's Maserati, they do some silly things, but uh, I don't see it being more than a day, day and a half, really, you know? I'll quote it at to let them know that it's possible that we can do it in less. Yeah. The last thing I want to do is under, hold uh, no, no, it, no, and no. then we're Agreed. stuck. Agreed. Agreed. So do that. Yeah. So tell Bill, you and I had a conversation. I don't I don't think it's that much. Okay? But just to be on the safe side, you're gonna quote him the cost of the new bushings, as well as maximum of like two days of labor. Okay. And just make sure you understand it's still significantly less than Maserati's yeah. charging. That's, that's obscene. The first estimate they sent me yep. was for left and right yep. upper and lower control yep. arms. It was $13,000. <laughs> That's a new car. That's just that's another car. I'm sorry. $13,000 for control arms on a car. Four control arms. Two on each side. Not like 12 control arms. Two. Two control arms. Two. 
I think that's the fairest way to take care of Bill. I think Save he'll be happy. Money, I think he'll be very happy. Yeah, and we used to tell him, make sure you don't worry using Maserati parts. Yeah. All the bushings are not Chinese aftermarket. Oh, yeah. We're buying them from Maserati. And he knows. Because like, the last time we did brakes on this car, the brakes to us were, let's say $4,000. We charged them like 4200 40, whatever. Yeah. I mean, we didn't, we didn't make, you know, we don't make a lot of money on parts, but I like using the Maserati parts, yeah. right? Also, make sure you include an alignment on that. Car alignment definitely tires. tires. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. So the other thing the Maserati needed were fresh tires because they were old. Rubber, you may not know, is flexible, but it has moisture in there. As rubber ages and is exposed to heat, and different heat cycles, like when it's being driven on, the moisture evaporates from the rubber. It leaves the rubber. What happens then is you get rubber that's no longer flexible and strong. It starts to become inflexible and it becomes harder and it rips easier. Yeah, tire failure in uh, motion. Yeah, old tires are replacing. So per example, was that Maserati tire that was old, as TJ was mounting the fresh tire, he was dismounting the old tire, the arm on the machine literally touched the tire and it just tore, which is terrifying to me because that could have happened to the client as he was driving the car on Route 80, which would have really sucked for the car. But the finger went right through the sidewall. Never seen that happen before. And this is for you people who drive on tires for 10 years. Don't do it. Long story short, we were able to replace those bushings for him at a very reasonable cost, and his car's all set now. But really, Maserati? This much money for freaking rubber? Off my office. It wasn't in your office. You believe this guy? Hey, come with us. We're gonna find some parts. Well, so that would mean it's in here. in the car. Okay. I know I saw it. Okay, maybe it got eaten then. It was delicious. I'm telling you, somebody ate it then. Because there oh, it, was. It was delicious. <sighs> Get some high action in my teeth. <sighs> I shit you not. I'll show you a picture. It's red and it sat right here. No, oh, we just looked at all the pictures. It was there. Was, there was only like three pictures that even showed it. No, come with me. Oh, so you were holding pictures out on me? No, those all those pictures had it. It wasn't red. It was red. Oh, oh look, a red one. What about a big valve on it? Supercharged See? Mustang Cobra, start one. See? Go for it, Mike. I can tell you factually, I've never seen that here. See, it was here. Yeah, when it came back, it was here. That might have been the first motor built on. No. They all kind of blend together at some point. Okay, but you, but you see it, it's I red and it's yes, here. Yes, see? I, I was not wrong. Somebody ate it that first motor built. I bet you the same guy who snacked on the power steering pump. What was it, the clutch now? No, 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 the I old the IAC, the idle air control motor. Oh, I got a dollar if we call Glenn, he has the old IAC. I don't know. I got a dollar. A client with a Mini Cooper Clubman, I believe. Like. A smart guy, he wants to do maintenance, preventive maintenance before things fail. Mini Cooper's a great car, great turn in, very crisp handling. But like every other car in the world, it has weaknesses. One of the weaknesses in that particular car is timing chain and timing chain guides. The timing chains themselves, which basically keep the whole rotating assembly within certain distances, right? Timing chain, timing of the motor. The chain actually stretches. So the metal fatigues and it elongate, which if you let it go too long, it jumps a tooth on one of the sprockets and then things that should not touch, touch, and bad stuff ensues. So we were proactively replacing his timing chain as well as the plastic guides the timing chains run on, they also wear out. So again, do it once, do it right, you forget about it. So I hope you enjoy this episode of The off Camber Life. We look forward to bringing you many, many more adventures of myself and the team. If you haven't subscribed, get your button gear, click that subscribe button, help us grow the channel. We'll bring you a lot more cool stuff. And uh, as I like to say, enjoy the drive.